Hello lovely people here on Chess24 and on YouTube, it's Anna here with your weekly dose of middle game strategy. If you are wondering what's uh, the topic this week, it is attacking the uncastled king. I will bring up the board immediately and start listening to the complaints. Why attacking? Why your missed strategy? That's true. But uh, first of all, I love this topic. Secondly, I will mainly talk about the ideas, the plans, what you should do when the opponent has his king in the center, in the middle of the board, and he doesn't castle. So instead of focusing on how to precisely calculate the tactical motives, which you will learn from Miss Tactics tomorrow, in her tactics show, you will learn a lot about uh, calculation, tactical motives, everything you need to, need to know about, how to strike, how to win the game. So today, instead of that, what we will see is how to get there, how to get the position where you are already winning. So of course, we will see the complete game. We will also see a beautiful finish at the end of each game. But what we mainly focus on is the idea what to do when the opponent has his king in the middle of the board. So that is actually my first question, and I would like you to think about it. How do you play when you have castled and the opponent doesn't castle? Maybe he doesn't want to, maybe he cannot castle. He has his king on e8. Let's imagine you're white and we have made some moves. I will not move the board now. Just imagine that we have developed the pieces with white and the opponent has his king on e8. So the first task of today is to think in general, what do we do in positions where the opponent's king is stuck in the center? How can we take advantage of the king in the middle of the board. I give you a bit of time to think about it. All right, I've seen some very good ideas there in the chat. So let's sum up what you guys have said and let's put some emphasis on what we should do. So first of all, of course, we need to open the position, especially the central lines, the central files. So if the king, uh, if the opponent's king is on e8, obviously we would love to have the e file open, the d file open, the f file open, the central files. If we can open them, that's great. And also, of course, we want to open diagonals, uh, Fi uh, ranks, I'm confusing the words, files, ranks, diagonals, anything you can open, the more open the position, the better. And if we have opened the position, it's also very much necessary to bring pieces, as many attacking pieces as possible. Because of course, after opening the files, the lines, whatever we can open, as many as we can, we need pieces to attack the opponent's king. So we open the position, especially the central lines. And secondly, we need pieces. We need to make sure that we have as many attacking pieces as possible. We do not try to give mate with one single queen. That's silly. We bring as many attacking pieces as possible. And third, we have to be very quick because the opponent will want to finish his development. We don't have all the time in the world to bring a 
all our pieces to build up an attack. No, 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 we should act quickly. You should be fast when your opponent's king is in the center because he is not stupid. He will not keep his king there. If he can castle, he will try to castle. So you should act quickly. Keep the initiative going. You don't let time to your opponent to finish his development. So these are the three main things. And of course, when we have carried out all these three things, when we have achieved them all, usually there will be a sacrifice or more sacrifices in the end to finish the game. Uh, you might have seen a video that I recorded for the London Chess Classic about Vichy Anand. If you haven't, I recommend that you watch it because that is a game that Vichy played with the white pieces against Bologan. And in that game, I also summed up these uh, main lines these ideas about how to attack the king in the middle of the board. So that is a brilliant model game for this topic, but I will not show in today's lecture. The same game, of course, you have it on YouTube already. We will see two other games. We have an old game, Kotov Kalmanok from 1937, and another one, a more recent game that you will soon see what is... No, actually, I will tell you. It is a game by Anish Giri. He had his birthday yesterday, so I thought that it was a good moment to choose an Anish Giri game. Anish Giri will launch a brilliant attack against a Polish Grandmaster, you will soon see who, and we will just see how these guidelines work in these two games, in these two model games from today. So remember, we want to open the position, especially the central lines. We want to bring as many attacking pieces as possible and we need to be quick. We cannot let the opponent finish his development. So for the sake of time, we will many times sacrifice material, but only when we have developed our pieces and we have enough attacking pieces. Don't start sacrificing just for the sake of sacrificing. So after this, preparation for what is coming. Let's see the games, let's see the exact moves. We are playing with the white pieces in this game. We played in Moscow long, long, long time ago. So the opening we will skip, but this is the French. I wish I could talk about it, but this is a middle game show. So my favorite opening, not this line with d takes e4. I believe it's too passive for black, but anyway, some players like it, so I will not criticize it. But I do believe that white's position is very comfortable here. And white goes queen d2, he just wants to castle queenside, finish development and say, hey, you have your king on e8, what will you do about it? Because black cannot really castle kingside, can he? I mean, it's not illegal, but he doesn't want to. It's not a move that you, you are like, oh, I wish I could castle kingside. No, since he has weakened his pawn structure with g takes f6, that would be just a very, very bad move putting the king on g8. So no, he doesn't want to castle kingside. He wants to prepare castle queenside. But just look at his pieces, how many moves it takes to prepare castle queenside. A lot of moves. And a lot of moves mean a lot of time. And we will use this time in our advantage and try to attack the opponent's king until it's in the center, on e8. So after b6, Kotov immediately played queen h6. Of course, it's a good move to castle queenside, finish development. I always say that first you finish development, then you strike. But queen h6 is also a good move. Of course, he's threatening queen g7, and that's an annoying move because the rook will be hanging on h8, and if the rook has to move, the pawn falls on h7. So black has to do something, and he reacted Badly. He played bishop f8 and that's too passive. You cannot put back your pieces to the back rank. You are just about to develop them and now you're putting them back. Now this was a bad move. Uh, he had to go f5 I believe but let's just focus on what happens after bishop f8. It's not like it's a losing move but it makes black's position to get worse and worse and worse if he continues like this. The tendency is pretty bad after queen f4, logical move. At some point we might want to give this check on d6, get rid of the black bishop, the dark square bishop and say you have some weaknesses on the dark squares. So knight d6 is always in the air. And after bishop b7, once again, an inaccurate move. I insist that black had to go for f5, even if it's about knight d6, forcing knight d6 and of course, white is very much fine here. I don't know how big is the advantage, but of course, I think we would all choose white. We will castle, we will bring the pieces. We are not giving mate yet, but that queen on d6 is very much annoying. So black will have to try to get rid of it. Anyway, what happens in the game is what we care about, because after bishop b7, 
you will need to tell me how would you play here and just remember that I suggest that you finish development first and then you strike so let's see who would play what because there are more good moves in this position and I would like to see which one would you pick I believe you guys have all voted for Castle Queenside and that's a great move. So congratulations. We finished development. We put our king into safety and then we bring the, uh, the rooks to the center, to the d5, to the e5 and see if we can meet the opponent's king, which is still on e8. The funny thing is that in this position, even Castle Kingside is a good move. I think that's more surprising than Castle Queenside. So if you wish, you can also Castle Kingside. The point is that you should finish development place the king somewhere safe and then bring the rooks to the e and d files you might say that it's not safe on the open g file it's a semi open file for black but he doesn't really have pieces to attack our king so that's why in this position even castle king side is good i do prefer castle queen side because yeah that's a g file i mean even if he cannot attack me i prefer my king on the queen side and with this move we already bring the rook one of the rooks to where it belongs to the central line so rook on d1 perfectly placed our king is safe let's see what the opponent does he plays h5 and now once again it's your turn to move what does he want and how to deal with that You guys are so quick yes the correct move in this position and a very important move king b1 because what is the opponent's threat he wants to play bishop h6 and ouch that would be a huge pain and a huge loss for us if we allow bishop h6 we would drop the queen that's just a horribly big threat you need to see after each and every move of the opponent what does he want why does he play this move and not the other move why why h5 the idea behind h5 is to place the bishop on h6 so once you realize what is the threat after the opponent's move every move of the opponent you realize that okay i need to move the king away from the diagonal and that's it now if he plays bishop h6 that's nothing um, at all because first of all you can move the king secondly you can start calculating lines like knight e6 check because now the bishop cannot take this knight so the only question is what happens if king e7 because our queen is hanging and we can't really go anywhere with the queen because the king will capture our knight if we go queen g3 he can attack our queen again and then it just feels like we have just lost the knight if you think that the idea of knight d6 is that we want to take on b7 then just consider for a moment whether 
we want to exchange queens in a position where we are attacking. So the opponent's king is in the center of the board on e7. Do we want to keep the queens on the board or we want to exchange them? We want to play an end game. I think you would all say that we need the queens on the board. So stop calculating knight takes b7. We don't want to exchange queens. Even this, if this line works, we don't lose any material. This is a position where black's king is fine on e7. Without queens, that king is just completely fine. There's no danger at all there. Maybe even black is better, could be better. He's not in danger, that is for sure. So after knight d6, king e7, do not calculate knight takes b7 unless that's the only way to save the piece. But just focus on this king on e7. It's not normal to have the king on e7. And we have quite many attacking pieces already. We have placed our king on b1, so we are basically ready for some kind of a tactical blow. Can you find it? What is the move that wins the position here? At least doesn't lose our knight because we will just start attacking the black king on, on e7 with a lot and lot of forces. So let's see what is the move here. What would you play with white? Okay, so you guys are so quick that you even answered the question without the question being said. I saw the solution already before I finished the sentence. So great, of course, knight f5. Well, not of course, it's not so obvious. You need to calculate after knight f5 check. We need to see what happens if it's taken, of course. Black will want to capture this knight. So we bring the rook. This is the last piece. Look at this position. We have all our pieces developed, all our pieces well placed. We are a piece down, but anyway, we have all our pieces well placed. The only piece that was missing from our army was the rook on h1. And now we bring it with a check to e1. Isn't that brilliant when you can develop the last piece with a check? And now after king f8, we give another check. And when king g8, we just go rook e7, the rook on the 7th is great, you know that. And there are so many threats. It's just way too difficult for black to defend everything. We, we are threatening to capture the knight on d7, of course. We are threatening to play bishop takes f7 or rook takes f7, depending on the position. So let's say he goes knight f8 not to drop the piece. We can, of course, in worst case, we can always take the piece back by capturing, uh, by exchanging queens and then the bishop. But remember, we don't want to exchange queens. So if there's a possibility of keeping the queens on the board, do it. Let's take on f7 with a check. That's always great. And if king h7, he wants later to place the bishop on g7. That's why he goes to h7 and not to g7 with the king. So if we go some discovered attack, he plays bishop g7. But here we can just go queen takes f6. Sometimes the best move is not a check, but a forcing move. We cover the g7 square. So if bishop g7, now this is just too late. Knight g5 is mate. We have kept the bishop on f7. And if he doesn't move the bishop, well, we are threatening to move the bishop. The, oh my god, what kind of arrows I'm drawing? Just we have we are threatening with basically any kind of discovered check de depending on what the opponent plays here. He is getting mated no matter what, unless he wants to give up the queen. But well, I believe we can win the game with a queen up. So this is just a horrible position, and it's all because we have checked that after bishop h6, we have time for knight d6 checks. Our queen is hanging, but don't uh, start thinking that when one piece is hanging, you need to move it. Many times you will have the chance to either counterattack, you can give a check, you can attack a piece of the same value or a higher value. And then if you don't have any of these options, you can still move the piece. So just make sure that first you look for uh, active possibilities. So 96 is a very active possibility. We are not thinking about moving the queen. We are not retreating the queen. We just play 96 check and after king e7, knight f5 check and our position is winning. Everything goes with a check. We are a piece down, but this position collapses for black. Look at the position, how many pieces he has on the back rank. His pieces are completely misorganized. There's no collaboration between the pieces and the king is way too weak. So that's why knight f5 works. And if after knight d6, he goes king f8, 
Then we just move the queen. And this position, we can move the queen. It is hanging. Let's move it. And we have this beautiful knight on d6, threatening knight b7. The king had to move, so it will never castle. This is a brilliant position. That's why after king b1, the opponent played bishop e7. And here, queen g3 is a very clever move because once again, we are threatening queen g7. Remember that we wanted to play queen g7 some moves ago? Well, now again, we want to play queen g7. And of course, the opponent will not go back with the bishop to a fade because then just see how many pieces there are undeveloped. He has moved the bishop, but now it's back on a fade. So pointless to play bishop a fade. He should try to improve his position and not go backwards. Knight f8 is a try. Uh, and now after rook he1, I did not ask about this move because we have seen the idea before. We have developed the last piece. So as I said in a in a different position but with the same idea. The rook on h1 is the only piece that is not playing and you need to make sure that you have all your pieces in the game. That's why we have so many pieces in chess. We need the whole army in order to put as much attack on the opponent as possible. So now that we have finished development, we have perfectly placed pieces, it is time to look for a way to attack, to strike, to sacrifice mainly, because if we cannot open the e5 by normal means, by exchanging a pawn on f5, let's say, I will draw this illegal move. It takes a very long time to move the knight away, then push f4, f5. That's horribly long. That's too much time. Remember that you should be quick. So we will not spend time on lengthy maneuvers like knight h4, f4, f5. Those are three moves and he will castle. He just needs to move the queen and then castle queenside in order to finish development. At least the king, the king's development. So we don't have time for that. After the opponent's move, which was f5, you need to think about everything that I have said. We have finished development, we have placed our pieces perfectly and the opponent's king is in the center on e8. We want to open the position but we don't have time to prepare it. That's just too long and anyway there's a pawn on f5 so even the plan I said before just doesn't work. So we need to find another way to open lines. It doesn't necessarily have to be the e5 if we can great but if we cannot just let's see how can we get access to the black king so we want to either open the e-file or we want to open some diagonals who knows but first of all f5 attacks the knight so it's nice that we want to open the position but isn't our knight hanging well i let you answer that question and i let you answer what would you play here what do you think is the strongest move in this position where white pieces are perfectly placed ready to attack. Let's see what do you think. You guys are quick and very strong. D5, two exclamation marks I would give to this move because it is brilliant. Our knight is hanging and we just don't care. He can take on e4, he can take on d5 too. Still, 
We play d5 because we want to open the position. We don't care if it's on the cost of this beautiful knight on e4. We don't care if we lose some pawns as well. We just want to open the position. So look at our rooks on d1 and on e1. They are ready to shoot, but they need open files. So yes, we want to open the e5, but also the d5 because, hey, this guy wants to play and this guy too. So after d5, of course, the main question is, what if f takes e4? And the answer is very simple. After d takes e6, look at our position. The queen is hanging on d8 and we are threatening e takes f7. Mate, it's not a check. It's mate. If the opponent moves his queen, this is mate in one. So this is how serious our attack is. After d5, his position can just be lost right now i mean yes his position is lost but i mean he's getting mated black is getting mated after f takes e4 d takes e6 and he either gives up his queen and we still have a beautiful attack and very powerful attack so we will win no matter what or if he wants to keep the queen that's mate in one just this simple mate in one we have only sacrificed the piece for this and we are already giving mate so that's cool isn't it d5 and the idea because we are here to discuss these ideas not so much the calculation behind them but the ideas so of course as i said the rooks were ready to strike we need to open files for them and not only the rooks the bishop on c4 was basically a nice piece but it was biting on this pawn on e6 protected by the f7 pawn so we could never really sacrifice on e6 we could never really capture this pawn and if we cannot do anything on the a2 ga diagonal then it's time to look for another diagonal time to look for a more painful diagonal if we could open the a4 ea diagonal and that's what we are doing with d5 that means that our bishop not only the rooks but also our bishop will be the happiest piece on the board because after c takes d5 what else Bishop b5 is horribly strong. The black king cannot go anywhere. He has to go knight e7. And then you will see that the pin is just way too uh, serious to be parried. He cannot do anything about the threat of this bishop b7 pin. But first of all, after d5, just let's take one last look at this position and see how all our pieces are attacking, all our pieces are developed. Yes, we have a hanging piece. The opponent is threatening to capture the knight on e4, but we just want to open the position as quickly as possible. And that's what we are doing. So d5, and of course, if e takes d5, knight f6 mate in one. That's also nice to see, but the opponent is not completely bad. Uh, I mean, I'm, I don't want to say that he was bad at all. In this in this game, simply Kotov played very well and Kalmanok made some imprecise moves not very bad moves actually he didn't make any blunders simply he made not the very best moves in some positions in some critical positions so it was enough for Kotov to win the game because the opponent lost so much time on playing this bishop f8 then bishop b7 not uh, not caring about the king on e8 that after d5 c takes d5 bishop b5 97 only move and after knight e5 i will not even ask knight e5 is the move because if you see a pin let's just force uh, the opponent have that he will have, have to do something about this knight on d7 well if he can because if you start thinking how can he defend the knight on d7 you realize that the only piece that could protect this knight is the bishop and if he goes bishop c8 i mean Maybe it's an easy question, but I want you to tell me, what would you play here with white?
So once again, I asked the question and then I realized that you guys have already answered. Even Blindfold have has analyzed this already. So congratulations, Even Blindfold and congratulations, Cesar and Ossicillian and everybody who said Knight C6 because that's just a winning move. Black's queen is trapped. Let's put it on the board, Knight C6. And the queen has nowhere to go. As funny as it seems, the queen is trapped and we are just winning. So that's why after knight e5, we are winning on the spot. Of course, uh, if the knight cannot be protected on d7, he should perhaps try f takes e4, at least capture a piece too. But in this position, we have many good moves. Of course, the easiest would be to capture this knight and say we don't have a piece done anymore. But before playing bishop takes d7, I would like you to think how will the opponent respond to bishop takes d7? Nothing weird, just a normal move, <laughs> don't go crazy there. And if you know what he wants to play after bishop takes d7, would you be able to prevent that move? Maybe. And threaten with bishop takes d7 afterwards if that threat can be made even more powerful. Let's see if you understood what I mean. Brilliant group you are, guys, everyone here on Chess24 in the live chat. Queen g7, yes, that's the move, and I think everybody has said it, so Queen g7, yes, of course, we don't allow King f8, so after Bishop takes d7, that would be mate, I mean, not mate, but Black has to give up his Queen after Bishop takes d7. On the other hand, if we play Bishop takes d7 immediately, King f8 is still a possible move, and Black is, of course, suffering here. But there's no immediate way to win. Maybe bishop takes e6 is fine, but why to complicate matters when queen g7 attacking the f7 pawn? So that's mating one, just to start with. Attacking the rook on h8, and that's also a horribly big threat. And bishop takes d7, so we are threatening with three major issues on the board, and black cannot do anything. I guess the normal move would be rook f8, and after bishop takes d7 to give up his queen, but you know, with the queen up, we normally win the game. So let's skip this. After knight e5, we are winning because of the pin. He cannot take the knight on e4. So black tried queen c7, but this position, this is just a piece up. Now we capture it, of course. We we have just captured a piece with a check. We are a piece up. And after king d8, queen g7, black still played on. I don't know really why but he played on for a few more moves and after knight g5 queen b8 bishop takes e6 he finally said it was enough so this position well let's just make some more moves f, f takes e6 knight takes e6 if king e8 this is just beautiful he cannot move the king anywhere it's back on e8 and the knights are controlling the d8 square and the d7 square so this is mate after queen g6 and queen takes f7 and if he goes the other way then we just take this bishop once again piece up and many many threats this is completely winning so it's very normal that in this position after bishop takes e6 black finally resigned I hope that you like this game and that you remember the main idea. So our guidelines are the following. We want to open lines, especially the center, but not only the E file and the D file or F file. You should also look for diagonals. In, in this game, the A4 EA diagonal was very important. So it was not only about the rooks. Yes, we needed the rooks, but it was also about opening the a4 ea diagonal so remember in general that yes the central lines are very important but also diagonals also ranks the queen on g7 the the bishop from b5 so we just want to open the position as much as possible gain access to the opponent's king secondly we have brought all our pieces there was no piece without 
any job. So we have developed all our pieces, all our pieces were active and that was the moment to strike. So it's either when you have developed all your pieces, you cannot improve them anymore, then that's a very good moment to look for a way to sacrifice or you have still some undeveloped pieces, but your king is safe and you have way more attacking pieces than the opponent has as defenders. So those are the normal situations for finding a sacrifice. You should either have more attacking pieces with a few undeveloped pieces, but safe king, or you have placed all your pieces very well and the opponent is still suffering to finish development. And third, we were very quick. Remember that when the knight was hanging on e4, we did not move it. So you should be quick. We don't really have time to just make slow maneuvers to prepare for opening the position. No, we should act as quickly as possible because the opponent wants to finish his development. He is not stupid. Remember that the opponent will try to play the best moves even if his king is stuck in the center for a while, he will try to find a way to place his king in a safer place on either the king side or on the queen side. Now let's move on to the more recent game that I have already mentioned that it's going to be a brilliant attacking game by Anish Giri who turned 22 yesterday. So happy birthday once again to Anish Giri, Mr. Tactics as I call him because he is the husband of Miss Tactics, my best friend Miss Tactics. So. Of course, uh, I'm very happy that uh, he celebrated his birthday yesterday in the company of Sopico. And he's just so young still, he's 22. So imagine if he's 22 and being among the very best players, he is in the top 10. He has been in the top 10 for a while already. And he is only 22. So what is this guy capable of? He can just eat the world he can he can be whatever he wants and i think what he wants to be is world champion so my best wishes to anish i think he's in a, the right path i think he's doing very fine and he will become world champion he is only 22 that's so i wish i could be 22 i'm not 22 and i won't become world champion but let's see how anish giri crushed uh, mateus bartel in this game from the european club cup in 2013. once again we will skip the opening but what I want to say here is that in this position, I saw another game with queen c1. So after queen b6, it would be normal to protect the b2 pawn. It is hanging. But Anish thought that, hey, I prefer developing. I don't care about losing material. You can grab this pawn. And once black played queen b6, he should really take this pawn. If not, why did you play queen b6? So yeah, once you start going for a pawn, you should actually take it. Don't take a step back once you are already there attacking the pawn queen b6 queen takes b2 b2 all normal but we see that the only piece that black has moved is the queen it's true that he's a pawn up and it's true that this position is not lost for black but come on we have developed all our minor pieces we are about to castle kingside and this queen on b2 will still have to lose quite some tempi on going back to the black camp because you cannot keep it on b2. It will be attacked with rook b1. It might even be trapped if you don't move it back. So, of course, black played queen a3 before the queen gets into bigger trouble. And after castle kingside, bishop g4. This will be the first moment you should start thinking we are a piece, uh, not not a piece, we are a pawn then, as I said, but we, ha we have developed all the minor pieces. Um, yes, we will try to bring the queen and the rooks as well, but this is not the position where it is uh, not like the previous game, where it was clear that we wanted a rook on d1, the other rook on e1. Uh, we want to first find where are we going to try to attack. So yes, our target is this king, that's true, but you should find a route, a path that leads to this king. So how to gain access to this king? From where? How? Try to answer these questions and then tell me the move. So how shall we attack this king? From where? And how to carry that plan out?
There are two main ideas in this position and you guys have found them both. So congratulations, everybody. We can either try to play on the E file. So if we want to play on the E file, let's push E4. That's a very good move. You can either push E4 immediately or you can play H3 first, force the bishop move or capture on F3 and then push E4. In both variations, you will want to open the e5. Black cannot really avoid it. We will, if he doesn't capture on e4, we will capture the pawn on d5, open the e5, and try to build up an attack on the e5. So this is a perfectly wise plan. It's very good. It's uh, one of the alternatives. The other one is what Anish played, and that's that might be a move that looks a bit weird, but actually makes a lot of sense because remember that we have lost a pawn a pawn that used to be on b2, so there is a semi-open b-file already. Let's try to use it. You can go rook b1 as suggested by some of the users. That's not a bad move, but the move that makes even more sense is an awkward looking queen b1, because we want to threaten queen takes b7. After queen takes b7, the rook would be hanging, and yes, the opponent will not blunder, I know, but the queen on b1 will carry out another task, not only attacking on the b-file, but something else that I cannot reveal yet. So after queen b1, we are threatening to go queen b7, the opponent has to react, he plays b5, and in this moment you will see the second idea behind playing queen b1. So queen b1 was useful to force b5, and also it's not just about the b-file, it's also about something else. How can we open the position here? Let me see if you can guess the move. I've seen so many great moves in the chat, guys. You are brilliant today and mainly in all my shows. I have a very nice audience here on Chess24. You guys are very talented, very skillful and very enthusiastic. That's what I like the most, that you guys are very active and always responding to the questions. So I have seen mainly all the good moves that are possible in this position, one of them being knight e5, which is... Why not knight e5? We place the knight on e5 perfectly fine on e5 of course it's a very powerful knight we attack the bishop on g4 the only drawback of knight e5 is that later when the bishop moves we will have to deal with this f6 move maybe it's a threat maybe it's not a threat we should deal with that anyway knight e5 is a good move also e4 is a good option but those of you who like the move e4 i suggest that once you are in this position and you decide whether you want to try to play on the b-file attack on the semi-open file or open the e-file with e4 in this moment when you take a decision then just stick to the decision so if you want to play e4 play it here because here it makes a lot of sense if you play queen b1 and you vote for the b-file you want to play on the b-file and try to open files on the queen side then stick to your plan with the queen on b1 e4 doesn't make that much sense it's not a bad move but what is the queen doing on b1 when we want to play on the e file so this is a bit of um, confusion in our plan so either e4 without the queen on b1 or queen b1 together with the other pawn break that i have seen in the chat by many users 
Very good job. C4 exclamation mark. Of course, C4. And why is this move possible? The, the idea is that, of course, B takes C4 doesn't work. We go queen B7 and adios, rook on A8. So that's just very bad. If he captures with the other pawn, then you should tell me what would you play after D takes C4. What was your idea? Once again, very well played, guys. It's knight takes c4. Yes, the idea is that the piece cannot be taken on c4, so bishop takes c4 is also possible. But compare bishop takes c4 to knight takes c4. Which move is forcing? It is knight takes c4 that is forcing after bishop takes c4. We just tell the opponent, hey, do you want to capture the bishop? And he, he might say, no, I prefer not. We are not threatening much with bishop takes c4. On the other hand, knight takes c4 is just a killing move. The queen on a3 is almost trapped. If it goes to a4, knight b6 wins a rook immediately. And if the queen goes to c3, then I should take back the almost word from my sentence. The queen is trapped. It's not almost trapped. Rook c1 and the queen has nowhere to go. So knight takes c4 is a winning move. You either capture the knight and after b takes c4, queen b7, you can basically resign because this is not only about the rook. If the rook falls, the knight falls and the, the king on e8 will be mated. So let's just demonstrate it with c takes d3, queen takes a8 and you try to protect it but you cannot defend your king and the b8 knight with any pieces developed. You have all your army on the king's side, very sad pieces. You will not move them at all in this game with black, so this is completely lost. We are threatening rook takes b1, and then we will even capture the bishop on f8. Material up and mating the black king, this is horrible. So after c4, black cannot capture the pawn because of knight takes c4. Very well spotted, guys. He played another move, bishop takes f3. Now, how shall we take this bishop? Shall we capture with the knight or with the pawn? I like to see that. This was the tricky question of the, the day, guys, and most of you have fallen for it. But it's my fault. I was basically suggesting that you should take with a pawn and no, the answer is we just capture with the knight and say this is a normal move, the knight is fine on f3, it will go to e5 later. And it doesn't matter that here in this position black could take on c4 and we don't have knight takes c4 anymore, we have to capture bishop takes c4 because 
Even without trapping the black queen, this position is very good. Look at our minor pieces, look at the queen that's about to join the attack as well. So this position is very, very powerful. And that's the reason why knight takes f3 is good. And not g takes f3. Because if g takes f3, it's true that he cannot take on c4. Because then we go knight takes c4 and we will win. But who said that he is forced to take on c4? So yes, we are ready for d takes c4. But maybe we are too much ready for it. He will not take the pawn on c4. And we have weakened our king. You might say that it doesn't matter because we are attacking. And it is true. It doesn't seem like the white king will be in any danger on g1. But what happens if black tries to finish development? He plays e6. And even if we try, we take on d5. And then we take the c5. We want to play queen c8 and give mate. He really tries to defend against everything he plays knight e7 and if we want to eliminate this def defender we have to exchange pieces bishop takes e7 the queen goes back and if this check queen d8 remember that the defender always wants to exchange queens we don't want to exchange queens and this position as uh, strange as it uh, may sound is not better for white maybe i haven't played the best moves for white maybe there are better moves what I'm saying is that if we play the normal attacking moves, we open the c5, we enter with the queen on the c5, this position is not winning because black has managed to build up some defense with the knight on d7, bringing back the queen, and he is ready to finish development. He threatens with bishop b4 or bishop d6 and castle kingside, and when he finishes development, that's the moment when this g takes f3 will matter, because once he finishes his development, he will go queen g5 check and then attack our king with king with moves like i don't know queen h4 if the bishop is on d6 imagine a bishop on d4 uh, a bishop on d6 sorry and the queen on h4 so suddenly it could be problematic for us if he finishes development and he is not far from finishing development so if you have the chance to keep your king safe and then continue attacking just keep it safe don't weaken it for the sake of rushing and wanting to play this knight takes c4 move if after g takes f3 he doesn't take on c4 then our knight will be kind of silly on d2 and in the other position after bishop takes knight takes this knight is heading to e5 so whether he takes on c4 or not we will play knight e5 at some point d takes c4 was played in the game and bishop takes c4 i already said here black played e6 of course he wants to finish development so what shall we do? How can we start acting before he calmly plays bishop e7 and knight f6? What shall we do here with white?
it is true that this was not an easy question and there's no straightforward answer to it, but the idea that many of you have spotted is that we should try to play for d5. We want to open the position, so we would love to play d5, but this is not the moment to play d5. We should prepare it a bit. Not much, but just a bit. So when we play d5, we need to be ready to take back and open files. Therefore, the move e4 is very logical. Once you see that you want to push d5 and open the position. So if you think log in this logical way, saying that I want to open the e and the d file, or at least one of them, you, I want to push d5 in order to achieve it, then you see that, okay, d5 doesn't make sense immediately. So let's play e4 first and then d5. Of course, you should always make sure that the bishop cannot be taken, but this is the same position. We always have queen b7. So that's not a problem. We can push uh, e4. And after bishop e7, which was played in the game, you should tell me, would you exchange bishops in this position? And if you would not, I don't know, maybe you would. Just tell me, would you take on e7? Would you leave the bishop on g5? Or you would do something else? These three options. Once again, not an easy position, so let's discuss it together. We would love to keep as many pieces on the board as possible. So the answer to whether we want to exchange bishops is no, we don't want to exchange bishops. But we also don't want to lose time with moves like, mm, let's just say, bishop f4, which looks completely fine. The bishop is nice on f4. We are keeping the bishop on the board. But now what if knight f6? black is just a move away from castling so we want to keep the bishop on the board but at the same time we don't want to waste time on keeping the bishop and the only move that keeps the bishop and doesn't lose time is this weird looking bishop c1 yes we place the bishop on where it came from bishop c1 but at least we win time and time is so important remember that that's our third guideline be quick, act quickly, don't allow the opponent finish his development. We keep material 
as many pieces as possible and at the same time we do it with a tempo so we keep the initiative going bishop c1 attacking the queen and after queen a5 now it is time for the move that many of you have said with the bishop on g5 so we have kept the bishop and now we play what do we play Well done everybody, it is d5 indeed and I see a question regarding the previous positions so let's go back to bishop c1 and if here queen b4, yes it's actually a very good question so thank you guys for mentioning it because as you know the defender always wants to exchange queens so why not queen b4 threatening the exchange of queens and also our bishop is hanging. The answer is that we have a move that saves the bishop and keeps the queens on the board and that is actually an easy move bishop b3 and even if it seems like we are not attacking at the moment black still has to finish development and we are about to push d5 also the queen on b4 is kind of weird so on a5 from a5 it has the chance to go back to where it is somewhat safer and where it has a few more squares to move to the queen on b4 can suffer I'm not saying it's trapped, but there's always bishop d2 with a tempo coming. So if knight f6, first we would go bishop d2 because we want to develop the bishop. We have developed it before, but then we moved it back to c1. Surprising move, I know, but that was the best move in the position. And after now, bishop d2, the queen has to go and it cannot go to d6. Just look at this, that because of the fork with e5, there's no queen d6. That means that the queen is almost trapped so i was not joking when i said that the queen on b4 is weird now queen a3 again the the queen has hardly any move so even if we cannot win the queen it cannot go back to d6 it cannot protect the king it has to be on a3 on or, or on b4 almost trapped so that's the reason why the polish player the polish grandmaster after bishop c1 went to a5 both moves are possible queen b4 if you want to analyze that position just search for the game in our database on chess uh, chess24.com look for the database and in the database the giri bartel game from 2013 and you can analyze all these lines we just simply don't have time to go into depth in all the sub lines but what we want to see is how this game developed after queen a5 d5 because that's the idea we wanted to see in action we know that we want to open the position we, we played e4 in order to push d5 and so it is the moment has arrived we have played d5 now you should watch out for moves like what if c takes d5 and you might be like okay i know what a question c takes d5 we take on d5 and we are happy we are opening the position no <laughs> e takes d5 in this position is a huge blunder tell me why e takes d5 doesn't work here.
Ouch, that's the reason. B takes C4 is possible here and you guys have found it. B takes C4 is possible because after queen B7, queen takes D5, not only captures the pawn but protects the rook. So we are a piece and a few pawns down. We could actually resign. We might have a check but not much more than that. The king is safe for the moment because there's no, no rook d1 coming we can try it still of course somehow to move the bishop then bring a rook to d1 but this position if black plays well is completely lost for white so make sure that in each and every position you calculate the same moves that you have seen before sometimes we take it for granted that our bishop cannot be taken on c4 because we played bishop takes c4 like three four moves ago and b takes c4 was never a good move for black but the position is changing especially when the pawn structure changes make sure that you once again consider the same variations especially if you are sacrificing something just go back to the same lines and see if they still work after c takes uh, d5 e takes d5 is a horrible blunder because the queen will go to d5 after b takes c4 and we are lost so always be alert Make sure that you do not take it for granted that your bishop can never be taken. Sometimes it can be taken. So after c takes d5, the good move is bishop b3. And here we are two pawns down. But still we are happy because the position is opening up. So if d takes e4, that would be quite a bad move. The queen is coming to e4. And black will suffer a lot if rook a7. We just start improving our pieces even more. Bringing more pieces, activating our pieces. And no matter the two pawns down, this position is very good for white. Even if we don't give mate immediately, even if he can castle, just look at our pieces, how, how dangerous they are. We can build up an attack wherever we want. So depending on how black plays, we will see where to place our pieces and how to attack him. But this position is just very bad. And if after bishop b3, he goes knight f6, which makes somewhat more sense, we will still take on d5 and after knight takes, bishop takes, e takes, rook e1 and once again we are still put two pawns down but after rook e1 he cannot castle, we try to make him castling as difficult as possible so we don't want him to castle, we will bring the, the bishop to g5, it's a pinned piece on e7, then knight to d4, queen to f5, all those arrows that I have drawn are for a reason so those could be possible plans after rook e1, bishop g5 is the big biggest threat and even if he goes f6 it means weakening his king it means that he cannot castle bad position not winning but this position is just yeah close to be winning it's quite a big advantage for white even with two pawns down so after d5 bartel played e takes d5 now in this position can we play e takes d5 or once again we are blundering our bishop tell me that very quickly Very good job guys, in this position we can and we should take on d5 because the b5 pawn is in the way of the queen so there is no blunder with e takes d5 if he takes on c4, well we are just winning the rook as usual. So in this line it works, in the other line it didn't, always make sure that you check both alternatives after e takes d5, knight f6 was played and black is about to castle. What shall we do about it? We cannot let him castle. We should somehow gain time. We should somehow take the initiative and go with it. And it doesn't matter if it's for the sake of even more material loss. Who knows? 
I might suggest a move, I might help you with this or I might confuse you. Just make sure that you don't let him castle. What to play here as white? Wow, there are so many geniuses in this group. I mean, you guys have said it immediately that you would sacrifice yet another pawn. D6, that is exactly the move that Anish Giri played. Two exclamation marks for D6. Very well done, everybody. D6 is the move. We just give up another pawn for the sake of speeding up our attack. D6, black has to take it. And now rook e1 is a check. In the previous position, you could have also thought about rook e1 immediately, but actually it doesn't prevent castling. Black can still castle because remember that our bishop on c4 will sometimes be hanging and if we allow castle kingside, the bishop will be taken eventually. There's no more queen b7. I mean, we can go queen b7, but we don't win material with it anymore. The knight can move and protect the rook. So this isn't the position where we are winning the rook. Just make sure that you always take into account btxc4 and going back to btxc4 just because i was saying that the b5 pawn was blocking it is the c6 pawn that was blocking the way of course i'm i said it wrongly i meant the same that we could take it because the c6 pawn is in the way after queen b7 sorry if i confused you with uh, saying the b5 pawn it is the c6 pawn of course that's why there's no queen d5 going back to the beautiful moment of d6 Sacrifice again, it is a pawn, two pawns down now for white, but this is a check and that makes a lot of sense that, yeah, we want to play rookie one with a check if we can, so it doesn't matter that we gave up a pawn for it. Why not bishop e7 is what Barta played? That's a good question. I have just said it. Well, thank you, Anna, for praising yourself. After bishop b2, we would threaten bishop takes f6 and if he castles now, that's a different story. Now when we take on e7, he takes our bishop, we are not winning material, but look at that king side. Sometimes you want to allow the opponent castle if it means that his king will be even worse. I mean, yeah, it was bad on e8 and it will be very bad in the center, yeah. But on the king side with this g takes f6 pawn structure, horrible. So sometimes you can let him finish development and say this castle into an even more dangerous place or... As, uh, an also dangerous place not even more dangerous but dangerous g takes f6 and queen b7 we are not winning the rook as i said because after queen c5 our rook is hanging too and yeah well we might win it but there's some counterplay with the c pawn anyway this is all a complicated line where why should play knight d4 if you want to see this you can analyze it with the engine in search for the game in the database analyze it in our analysis tool i don't want to go into details why this knight d4 works we give up the knight and then we take the rook so the c pawn doesn't promote long story put short this is working for white and the main reason is that after bishop e7 bishop b2 we are threatening with bishop takes f6 and black cannot prevent it if he takes on c4 it is the same story we take and then queen b7 threatening two pieces at the same time so this is just very good for white and let's see what happened in the game because if not this bishop b bishop b7 bishop b2 king f8 and it looks horrible that's true but we should still find a way how to attack this king we have the e-file and we should of course see whether our bishop is hanging on c4 we should always answer the question and secondly we should still bring more pieces remember that we want to open the position but we also want to make sure that we have loads of attacking pieces bring as many attacking pieces as possible and act quickly these are the three guidelines that we use so how to bring those white pieces how to just get that attack going against black's king let's see what would you play here
I think it was Koenj who said the right move first, so I will congratulate Koenj and the rest of the people who said queen f5 because that's the move. So we want to, the, to bring the queen. The, the queen is the best attacking piece. We need it as close to the black king as possible. Queen f5, threatening queen c8 check. At the same time, pinning the b5 pawn. So also, of course, we had other options like queen d3, attacking the bishop. But just remember that this bishop is also hanging. So you should start thinking, what if bishop takes h2 and then he takes our bishop? Let's avoid having to calculate all that. Queen f5 pins the b5 pawn, so there's no b takes c4 and we are threatening queen c8 check. That is simple. Knight bd7 protecting against, preventing queen c8. And now, now it is time to strike because as I said, the moment when you should be like really ready for sacrificing something, when you should look for uh, tactical motives is usually the moment when either you have all your pieces in the best possible places, all your pieces very active and you cannot really improve them any further. Or like in this case, when you have not developed all, your, all of your pieces because we have a rook on a1 and we have a bishop on c1, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because we have four very active pieces, four very active pieces against a few defending pieces. So let's try to find the weak spot in Black's camp and strike. So it's your turn to sacrifice and calculate too. Don't just sacrifice without calculating. Oh man, once again, you guys have answered the question without me having said the question. You guys are just brilliant. Yes, bishop takes f7 is the correct move. If black captures it, well, then he will suffer a lot. Queen e6, not only it's a check, but we also win the bishop on d6. And we win it with a check because he has to go king f8. If he doesn't go king f8, that's even more painful. King g6, trying to avoid this queen takes d6 check, but this after knight h4, king h5, few more checks and it is mate. Of course, you cannot expect as black to hide the king on h4, it will be mated. So after queen e6 check, black has to go king f8, but now queen takes d6. We have regained material, now we are only a pawn down and we are still attacking. So here... The question is how to bring even more pieces into the attack because we have the queen and we have the rook. So this is a good moment to think about it. You can either improve the rook even more, a rook on the seventh, you know that that's horribly strong, rook e7 threatening queen e6 check, or the other way to improve the position and threaten mate is to go back to e6 with a check. So that's once again, keeping the initiative going. And when, when the king is on f8, we have a dark squared bishop. We cannot go bishop a3, but we can prepare bishop d6 after bishop f4. And if you have seen the previous lesson where we talked about Fabiano Caruana's brilliant victory too, we talked about that game briefly. That was only a queen and a bishop. As for white, that, that is all that Fabiano had. He was a rook down, but his, his queen was placed in a similar way cutting the king both on a file and on the diagonal and the bishop would join the queen from h6 in that game here from d6 but the queen and the bishop if they collaborate this way they can deliver mate just the two pieces so bishop f4 and black cannot prevent mate so after bishop takes f7 it is really really tough for black to defend actually the position is lost but he tried that's of course, something that you should always do, even when you're in a lost position, try to make it as difficult as possible for the opponent. So he tries to make things complicated. He plays knight e5 and that blocks the e-file. So in this position, you should tell me what would you play and don't think about retreating moves. We don't want to go backwards. We want to keep the attack going. What to play after knight e5?
Let's see what we have. I've seen some of the users mentioning knight takes e5, which would be the normal move, but it blunders mate in one. So let's pay attention to the opponent's pieces. This queen attacking our rook on e1, we cannot move the knight. That's why we did not play knight g5 before. That's why we cannot go knight takes e5. We would blunder mate in one. Ouch. So let's forget about moving the knight. He is threatening knight takes f3 and queen takes e1. That is a big threat. So, hey, we should eliminate this knight on e5. If we cannot take it with the knight, then we should take it with the rook. This is, I believe, the only winning move in the position. As I said, black has a huge threat here. Our bishop will be hanging later too, so there's not much to do here. You have to go for it. You have to go all in. Rook takes e5. And now if king takes f7, it is the same thing, but even without the knight. So we will go queen e6 check. You know that. But what if bishop takes e5? What is the idea? What shall we do here with white? Let's see one by one the options you guys have talked about because there are many moves and uh, some of them are not really good. So if bishop a3 check for instance, black will just take it and maybe we are not losing the game but we haven't achieved much. Yes, now we can take knight takes e5 before we couldn't because of queen e1 but this position is just, it feels like it cannot be the right path because we have an exchange down and the queen will go back. Remember that the queen is not only the best attacking piece, it is also very much needed in the defense. If you can bring the queen close to your king when you are being attacked, not in a passive way, but just to make sure that it controls a lot of squares, then it is very difficult for white to attack in this position with the queen on d6. So this is not the way to play. And also, if the bishop takes e5, Bishop d2 looks tempting, we attack the queen and then we want to take the bishop. And it's not a bad move, but it's not the best move. Um, you can just, um, uh, how shall I put it? It is a good move, as I said, but sometimes you need to consider moves that are like queen takes d2. And yes, we are very happy to play a position with a queen up, but remember that you are giving up a lot of material. so. Yeah, perhaps this position is also winning, um, but it's not easy anymore because black has two rooks for the queen. Yes, his king is bad on f8 and yes, we, we should be still winning. So 
Actually, those of you who have said bishop d2, I should accept that solution because bishop d2 is a good move. Simply make sure that when you have sacrificed a lot of material, you also take into account the possibility of the opponent giving something back. So he might sacrifice his queen and then try to defend this position where it's not clear how we're gonna give mate. We should be winning, but it's not clear. So the easy way, because this is not easy, the easy way to win after bishop takes e5 is to take the bishop on e5 and i say easy because we capture a bishop we protect the e1 square and black cannot take the bishop because then knight g5 comes and after king g6 this is a move that uh, it doesn't matter it shouldn't bother bother you if you haven't seen because this move is kind of Kinda of not normal. Yes, now that we see it on the board, it makes a lot of sense. We are threatening mate in two, but g4, to calculate g4 when we have this position on the board, well, it was difficult, I know. So queen takes e5, sorry, queen takes e5 is a very good move because the bishop cannot be taken. Knight g5 and after g4, it's gonna be mate, the king cannot hide. But g4 is not an easy move to see. Just let's take some conclusion from this position and realize that sometimes bringing more attacking pieces doesn't always mean bringing your minor pieces and your major pieces. Sometimes it can be a pawn, just a small soldier there on g4 threatening mate in two because of queen f5. So g4 here wins the game because after knight takes g4, queen e4, the king, as I said, has nowhere to hide. It's not even with checks, knight e6. I analyzed it when uh, with the engine so i'm not a genius this is what the engine says this is how the position wins but if you want to go through it slower find the game in our database as i said you can analyze all the variations that i have mentioned the point is that the king on g6 or h5 is not safe so after queen takes e5 we either have two pieces for the rook or we are giving mate to the black king but anish played is also good of course he played bishop b3 and this might look weird but he says that, okay, I'm an exchange down, but I'm threatening to capture the bishop. And besides threatening to capture the bishop, I will play queen e6 and threaten queen f7. And at some point, I will bring this bishop and threaten bishop c5. So keeping this bishop also makes a lot of sense. And maybe this is more a human move than seeing g4 four moves later. Queen takes e5 and then g4. Bishop b3 admits that yes we are an exchange down and we are <laughs> sacrificing this rook let's not forget that our rook was hanging so rook uh, bishop takes a1 is possible but he calculated that after queen c5 king e8 queen takes c6 he wins back the rook and he doesn't just win it back he takes it with a check after king e7 queen b7 check is very important you force the opponent's king back to the back rank he cannot go king d6 that is just horrible it will be a disaster he will get mated in the middle of the board so he has to go either uh, back to the back rank or play knight d7 when once again we will force him with queen e4 check to go to the back rank this is not easy don't think that i can find these moves just like this in an instant after a few seconds of thinking but if you have an hour and a half on your clock and you sacrifice the piece or two or an exchange something you should really think about how to actually made the black king how to either mate the king or take all his pieces so queen e4 check makes a lot of sense because yes it seems like knight e7 can hide the king but not from the e5 he has to go back to the back rank and then we just take both of the rooks so from an exchange down we end up having a piece up it is complicated and it is brilliant but this is how these sacrifices are what you should remember is that you have found this bishop takes f7 because you knew that you had a lot of attacking pieces and the black king was weak. It's not normal to have the king on f8. So after that, sometimes you really have to use some time, 10, 20 minutes, if it's a tournament game, maybe sometimes even half an hour, depending on the position. And just make sure that you calculate every possible line and try to find the most forcing variation so in this position queen takes e5 and bishop b3 are the best moves anish played bishop b3 i already showed what happens if bishop takes a1 the opponent played rook e8 and here 
simply bishop e3, developing this bishop, threatening bishop c5 check, and after b4, protecting the c5 square, preventing bishop c5, he just played bishop f4. He played just so simple. He's an exchange down, but now he will win back the piece. You cannot do anything against bishop takes e5 and then bishop d6. Check is horribly strong. One line that he still had to calculate because these positions are not easy at all. He had to see what happens after g6. And the answer is beautiful. If g6, forcing the queen to go away, you cannot really keep the queen anywhere in here. You, we want to keep this pin up, the pin up and also this pin. You cannot keep it on f5, but you want to keep the pin on the fifth rank. But there's knight e5 and this position is not winning immediately because if you give a check, the bishop goes back to g7 and we might end up being in danger as white. We are an exchange down still, remember that. So what he had to see is that after g6, he has bishop h6 check and when king e7, not king f7, the knight e5, uh, the knight, uh, sorry, king f7 is not possible. I'm getting tired, I believe. So king e7 and here you can play queen takes e5 and play this end game where I know we wanted to give mates to the black king, but you have a pair of bishops against a rook. So this is a very good end game. This is winning. You have a pair of bishops and black doesn't have pawns for the rook you will capture on c6. And an even nicer line after king e7 is knight takes e5 because even if a queen is captured, knight takes c6 wins back the queen. It might sound like very complicated, it might sound too difficult, but what I want you to see is not how these brilliant moves can be found and how we should be as strong as Anish Giri. I wish I was as strong as Anish. I cannot find these moves. What I can find and what I, I should explain you uh, are the basic guidelines behind these moves and this is what we have talked about already so let's just repeat it once again in this position we either had the chance to play e4 or queen b1 both have the same guideline behind these moves so you want to open the position e4 is a good move and queen b1 is a good move queen b1 with the idea that after b5 you push c4 you should break through with these pawns you should create open files open lines open diagonals in order to get access to the black king and when we have achieved this when we had more or less the position open let's just go forward some moves later remember this position when we have opened the position but the opponent was about to castle so sometimes you will sacrifice even more material especially pawns in order to speed up your attack d6 just to make sure that rook e1 comes with a check these are the ideas that you should remember and not how difficult it is to calculate brilliant sacrifices that comes with practice just use our tactics trainer here on chess 24 train tactics train tomorrow with sopiko she will have a tactics show tomorrow so make sure that you are here tomorrow in the afternoon sopiko will teach you about tactics how to find these brilliant tactical motives what you should remember from today's lesson is that when the opponent's king is in the center we should open lines we should bring as many attacking pieces as possible and we should be quick, act as fast as possible, keep the initiative going, you cannot let the opponent finish development. Just stay with these three ideas and next time you have a game where the opponent doesn't castle or you don't let him castle, you should be able to use these guidelines in order to help you play, help you find the best moves. I will have a show next week as well. I, it might not be on Wednesday, just make sure that you stay tuned for the announcements here on Chess24. Maybe it's going to be on Tuesday. I don't know yet because I might be away on Wednesday. We will continue talking about the king in the middle of the board, the uncastled king. So if you thought this was difficult, next week we will once again talk about this in a different way, but we will still continue this topic. I hope that you learned something from it and I hope that you like this Anish Gear game. It was because he turned... 22 yesterday so happy birthday once again to mr tactics anish giri and i will see you guys next week bye bye